Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. This is Hydlide for the Nintendo Entertainment System. This is this is gonna be an interesting Let's Play. Um, this is a game I never thought I'd ever finish, like ever. And as sort of a joke on Twitch, uh, fellow Patreon backer Sleeves of War suggested I play Hydlide, and I was like, okay, let's do that. No, I'm farewell knowing like what I'm what I was gonna get into and. Um, a few hours later, we actually had the game beaten. Actually, not really. We actually played it for a few hours the first day. I had to go to bed, and then I picked it back up the next day. I started a fresh new game, looked at a couple walkthroughs, and lo and behold, I finished the game. Um, and being the masochist I am, a couple days later, I went, and on my own time off stream, I beat the game again. I have no life. I, I openly admit that. Um... So we're going to go ahead and beat Highlight yet again for the third time in a Let's Play. Um, this is going to be a little bit different than usual because what's going to happen is I'm going to be fast forwarding through a lot of this game because Highlight requires you to grind like crazy. And it's it's the grinding in this is like 85% of the game. So, you know, there's not going to be a whole lot for me to talk about at certain points in the game. And as a result, I'm just going to, you know, mute the mic, not say anything, and then just fast forward through all the grinding. So, um, but yeah, I'll still explain stuff as we go. I'll explain what you have to do and things like that and uh, what's required to get through to the end of the game. This is a, a relatively tough game, but if you know exactly what to do, you should be able to get through it. Uh, it's a very archaic Japanese action RPG, and it has some elements that should be familiar to some people that are familiar with games like East books one and two and uh, and things like that. It's got the uh, the run and bump mechanic that you see in some of these older Japanese action RPGs. Uh, so yeah, before we jump into the game and get started here, as usual, I want to give a big shout out to my current Patreon backers. So they're going to flash by the screen. Thank you guys for your continued patronage. As usual, if you're interested in supporting my show through Patreon, links are in the description box as always. And uh, you'll also get access to my uh, Patreon exclusive Discord server. So if you want to hang out there, that is a perk on Patreon now. Also, thanks to our recent live stream super chatters and the channel members who are doing that on a monthly basis as well. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and hit start and uh, you actually have a password in this game so what's interesting about Highlight is that um, you have a save system but there is no backup battery in the game so if you want to uh, save your progress um, you need to write down this password uh, and then enter it at the password screen when you you know you know recycle the power or, or come back at a later time uh, but we're just gonna do game start and here we go. So in Hydlide, you have two different modes. You have defense mode and then attack mode. Uh, you go into attack mode by holding down the A button. Uh, when you're in attack mode, you are much more powerful. And this is how you kind of want to attack a lot of enemies in this game uh, if you want to kill them quickly. Like these slimes here in the beginning, I barely do any damage to them when I'm in defense mode. You do still actually do damage in defense mode, um, but not enough damage to kill them quickly. Um, also, what we're going to be doing a lot in this playthrough is pressing select and saving. We're basically going to be what they call in the Doom community, save scumming. Um, where you just save over and over and over again. You basically just abuse the functionality because enemies are extremely dangerous in this game. And uh, they will kill you in just a couple of hits. Um, and especially this early in the game, they'll, they'll kill you in two or three hits. Easy. Um, and that carries over for most of the rest of the game. Even when you get maxed out on your levels, uh, enemies will still annihilate you extremely fast. Uh, so yeah, you've got defense mode and you've got attack mode. Ideally, what you want to do is you want to attack enemies from behind. And kind of like I mentioned earlier, you just bump into enemies and that's it. Um, behind is uh, basically, you know, you want to attack the side that is opposite to the, like, the way that they're moving. So these guys are moving left, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack them from be, you know, behind, basically. Not all enemies in this game have, you know, direction sprites. So, like, these these slimes, they look the same, no matter what direction they're moving in. But these, um, uh, these guys right here, the, uh, the kobolds, um, they actually have different, uh, sprites, depending on, you know, the way they're moving. So, it's easier to tell if, if you're behind them or not. Um, the thing about enemies, like, the slimes in particular, is that uh, their, uh, movement is really erratic. So sometimes it's a little difficult to, to predict which way they're going. And this is a, a me mechanic I'm not really a big fan of is um, um, 
if you sit next to an enemy, they have a tendency of hitting you. Um, which is, which kind of sucks. And that's exactly what happened. So the slime actually just walked right past me and he still hurt, he still hurt me. Um, but uh, that is why we save and load our data frequently. Unfortunately, I didn't really save um, outside of just like the very beginning there. So we actually lost quite a quite a bit of experience points there. Um, kind of like the the uh, the East games uh, when you're on um, just like open plains, uh, you will get health back. It'll regenerate relatively slowly. Uh, so that's really important as well in this game is letting your health regenerate. Now, uh, your health actually will deplete depending on, you know, certain tiles that you can stand on. Like, if you go into the desert, uh, your your life will actually drain. And there are other parts of the game as well where your life will drain too, depending on the tile you're standing on. Uh, later tiles in the game that are non-grassy will also replenish your health, but they'll replenish your health at a slightly slower rate. For instance, there's this castle you have to go into at the very end of the game. And, um... You know, your health replenishes inside that castle, but it does so at a very, very slow rate. So it's, you know, if you want to replenish your health faster, it's good to just kind of go outside and, and do it that way. So we're still a long way off from our first level up, but what we really want to do here early on in the game is grind out on these slimes. It's pretty much mandatory. I mean, if you want to have an easier time to later parts of the game anyway, it's pretty much mandatory. And look at that, one hit took away all of our health. Now, keep in mind that when you're holding down the A button and being in attack mode, uh, enemies do a lot more damage. So you don't want to just hold down the A button just because you can. Uh, you do want to, um, you know, go back into defense mode. That way, if you accidentally get hit, the enemies aren't going to kill you in one hit or two. Uh, if you're in attack mode, enemies will kill you very, very quickly, no matter what. It doesn't really matter what the enemy is. Uh, they will do a lot of damage if you're in attack mode. All right, so let's go ahead and save it again. So, you know, the menu system also has a few other things here. You can actually um, uh, click the speed option. You can go to high speed mode if you really want. Uh, it's a lot faster, but it's also, you know, you're at greater risk for, for dying, basically. Uh, I've never really put a lot of time into high speed mode in this game. Uh, although I can see now, now that I'm actually messing around with it, that it might actually be pretty handy to get through the game a little bit quicker. But we're going to be doing the uh, the normal speed mode for most of this playthrough, uh, if not all of this playthrough, just because it's a little more manageable for me, honestly. There are some... Oh my god, we just died again. There are some parts in this game where, um, you know, you do have to react pretty quickly. And, um, you know, this save system that I'm abusing right now, it actually works pretty well in this game. Yeah, yeah there's no battery, so if you want to, you know, power off the system, you do have to write down the password. But in the game itself, the save load system works perfectly fine. Um, although there are, uh, there actually not are, there is a point, like a single point in the game where you can get soft locked out of it if you don't have uh, certain things done. So you, you need to kind of know the game uh, in order to avoid that scenario. I'll sort of explain it as we get farther into the game. And let's go ahead and save it. The second level um, will actually come much faster than this first one that we're going to get. Um, because it'll take less hits to kill the slimes. So right now it's taking like three hits, even in attack mode. Um, after this, it'll only take like one or two hits, depending. Um, and that will be ideal. So we'll actually be able to gain our experience uh, points a little bit faster after this. So the game is a grind. It really is a grind. Uh, it's got a lot of, um, you know, it's got a lot of grinding, which sort of like artificially inflates the, um, you know, it, it artificially pads out the game's length, basically, uh, which is a, a major complaint of this game. A lot of people actually have a lot of complaints about this game, and I totally, I totally understand. I actually don't really recommend anybody play this game. I think it's actually interesting from a, like a historical standpoint, because this came out originally in 1984 on Japanese computers, various Japanese computers. Um, and, you know, what's actually kind of interesting is after we played this game on Twitch and, uh, you know, uh, you know, we were we were sort of in like a reflection mode. Um, we were just sort of like, you know, wondering what other versions were like. We were thinking about what the RPG landscape was like at the time of this game's release. And uh, if you go and look at the old Japanese versions on the, you know, the Japanese computers, the NES one or Famicom version might actually be the best version to play. Um, as quote unquote bad as it may look in this day and age. Um, the game is, I think if you look at it from a 1984 perspective, uh, it's okay. You know, it is what it is. Uh, there are a lot of other Japanese games 
it had very similar mechanics and that were also very, very cryptic. That's another thing that um, is tough about this game. It is insanely cryptic. You will never figure this game out without a walkthrough. Trust me. Um, there is some really cryptic stuff in this that I will explain as we get into it. But, uh, you know, looking at it from a 1984 perspective, it's, it's actually kind of interesting. Um, again, though, I still don't really recommend it. It's, it's very dated. It is really tough to get into, and it is challenging. You will be saving and loading like crazy uh, over the course of your initial playthroughs. Even when you're experienced at the game, it is still very, very challenging. Uh, it's very, very easy to die. One false step, and you're pretty much toast. And uh, so we're actually about to get our first level up. There's no fancy fanfare or anything like that. It's just we just leveled up. Our, our health bar basically doubled. And now we deal more damage against these guys. So again, like I said, this next level up should go a little bit faster. Yeah, the experience points don't really scale right away either, which is kind of interesting. In a lot of games, the experience points will scale. So the higher up you are in your levels, the less experience points enemies give. Or um, one other way that some RPGs do it is they just raise the amount of experience points you need so much for your next level that the experience points of existing enemies you're fighting just aren't really worth the trouble. Um, but this game, like, it still seems to give you pretty much the same ratio of experience points uh, after each kill. So, because I'm more powerful, I'm killing these enemies faster, uh, this next level actually comes a little bit faster as a result. So once we get this next level up, we're gonna push on and we'll be able to get a couple of items. Uh, we'll be able to go to our first dungeon and fight a vampire, which you know, takes all of 15 seconds to do. Uh, as far as your mandatory items in this game, Highlight is actually an extremely, extremely short game. All the grinding uh, is basically what pads out the experience. You know, this is an archaic action RPG. You know, you can go and look at like the original East game and look at that and say, man, that's archaic. But man, you want archaic, go play Highlight. Uh, Highlight is most certainly a blast from the past. Um, I, again, I think it's I think it's actually really interesting from like a hist historical context, but you know, as far as uh, the actual gameplay is concerned uh, and whatnot, I I don't think it's really worth experiencing. Now, watching somebody else experience it and suffer through it, I think probably has its own value and its own merit. But uh, I am glad I've actually beaten this game because you know I've always looked at this game as an absolutely hor horrendous game, and that's generally how the, you know, a lot of people on the internet feel about this game as well, especially thanks to some really popular game reviewers and whatnot. But, um, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm still glad I've, I've gone through it. You know, it's something I've got, you know, it's a notch on, under my belt that not a lot of people have. And uh, so for that, I think, it's, I think it was worthwhile, but I, I won't recommend a lot of other people do it. Uh, most certainly not. All right, so we're a little over halfway to our next level up. And trust me, later on in the game, I'll probably just start, stop talking and just fast forward through a lot of the combat and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and save. By the way, this music in the background that you hear, if you can hear it, um, it's pretty much one of the only loops in the game. Um, the only other loop you hear in the main game itself is the final boss theme. And uh, which which is actually about equally as grating. Um, I actually don't mind the music. It's just that it's the same 10 second loop over and over and over and over again. Um, I, I was playing this on my own time the other day, and after I was done playing, this music was stuck in my head for the next two days straight. Um, which actually hasn't happened to me in a long time with a video game. Uh, I play so many different video games these days. I have so much music just like going in and out of my head. Um, that I don't usually get music stuck in my head the way I used to, like in an inf infectious kind of manner, like you just can't get it out of your head. Um, but because I listen to this tune so much, particularly over a couple of day time span, um, it's, you know, five days later, it is still stuck in my head. And now that I'm doing this Let's Play, it's, it's probably going to be in my head for the next two weeks. Um, Man, the things I do for you guys, I swear. Okay. There we go. So that is our second level up. And so now we can actually go ahead and progress. So what I want to do, there are a couple things I want to do here. Um, one goal in this game is to find three fairies. 
uh, and that is mandatory. Also, you have to find three very specific treasures as well. Um, the three fairies are hidden, though. Um, very, very hidden fairies, very cryptic stuff. But let's see if we can find a couple of the fairies. By the way, you don't get any gold or anything like that in this game. You don't buy anything, there's no money to get. Um, so, once enemies stop giving you experience points, like certain enemies, like these cobalts and these slimes, they no longer give me experience points. Um, there is no point to attack them, unless they're just in your way. Also, we are in a, a dungeon, you require a lantern for the dungeon, and we'll actually get that, I believe, after killing the vampire. So, what I want to do is come here, not here, and not quite down here yet. Actually, I don't know, let's come this way. I don't have the world map memorized, I usually just kind of wander around a little bit, but basically there's a treasure chest, treasure chest right there, which is, we, we need to get that. Uh, and then we actually need to come into this dungeon where these uh, little blue guys um, are moving around in sort of like a Pac-Man ghost type of fashion. See, there's a chest in there we have to grab, but we're gonna come over here first and get this chest. And I believe this is the cross. Yeah, we got a cross. The cross is required in order to kill the vampire in his dungeon. There's also this graveyard here. You don't want to mess with the graveyard first because the zombies in there are extremely powerful. Also, that chest requires a key. There are a couple of chests in this game that actually require keys. Um, this is actually where our first fairy might be. So what you have to do is walk up to a tree and pick the right tree. And it's random. There we go. That was the right tree. Um, Although, uh, we just died, so we have to do that again. So, we're gonna load our game. And, again, it's completely random, so we... So we're just gonna do this over and over until we get the fairy. <laughs> Welcome to Highlight, guys. <laughs> it's it's exciting. Yeah, so uh you know, when I first played this, we discovered that um you know, you have to touch these trees. We well, not have to touch these trees. We discovered that you can touch these trees. And we just got wrecked by the bees, or wasps, or whatever they are. Um, and so I never thought to come back here and try to touch more trees. Why would I want to touch more trees? They're gonna kill me! Well, you need to touch the trees for the fairy. Oh wow, we got super lucky. So as you can see, the, the fairy is randomized. So, and I, I was able to save it. Uh, so there are also some moving objects. Um, somewhere around here. Let's see if I can find those. Unless they're on a different continent. I don't think they're on a different continent. But there are some moving, like, rocks uh, and trees, and they will pretty much kill you in one or two hits. Uh, they have another fairy, actually. Come to think of it, they might not appear until after I do some other dungeons and whatnot. So let's go ahead and take care of the vampire first. Which is down this way. And, again, save lots. Save often. Oops, wrong dungeon. Alright, so let's come back down here. Here's the vampire. So we come into here, and the vampire you basically have to attack from behind. And there he is. And so with these Pac-Man-like mazes, it's good to just try to get behind the enemy and just follow them. Unfortunately, he goes off the screen sometimes, which is, you know, kind of tough to deal with. Let's see which way he goes. He goes... This way? He's following me now. Okay. And off the screen. He turned around! He turned around for some reason, that was weird. He doesn't normally turn around. Uh, so let's go ahead and re just reload our game, come back down, do it again. So again, tons of trial and error in this game as well. You know, again, like I said, Highlight's not a game I really recommend people play. Uh, it's got some, like, historical charm to it. But it can be brutal, and I think a lot of people won't be able to put up with this game's difficulty. Alright, come on, vampire. Come back down.
There we go. Great. Awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and save it just in case. Like I said, I'm gonna be safe scumming. Alright, so we got the lamp. So now the caves that are not lit up um, will now be lit up. So, I mean, it's entirely possible to get through the caves without the lamp, but I, I don't recommend it really at all. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sit right here. I think our health will still restore. Yep. It basically thinks we're on a, uh, a green patch. And one thing I do too is when I'm trying to re refill my health like this, I'll go ahead and save it every couple of health blocks. Because it only takes a moment to save, and you know, there are times in this game where you'll be trying to, you know, replenish your health and an enemy will just come out, you know, from one side of the screen like that and just bump right into you. Okay, so this part is pretty tricky as well. These guys do a lot of damage and their movement is very random. But I do want to get that chest while I'm here. So let's hope I can do this. There we go. Nope, couldn't do it. Again, their movement is really, really random. These wisps, as they're called. And let's try this again. Lots of trial and error in this game. Lots and lots of trial and error. I used to grind out on these guys too, but I really don't think it's worth it. So we just got a sword. And let's go ahead and save it. Enemy placement, um, when you save and load, is actually randomized. So when I reload the game, like their placement should be different. See? Now I just have to get back out. Which is obviously easier said than done. What's actually kind of interesting is I, I do have a flash cart and I have tried using save states with the flash cart. Um, and it, it's kind of glitchy actually. Like there's something up with highlight that sort of conflicts with the flash carts, um, you know, uh, save system. So, I know there's a technical reason behind it, but I'm not sure how to explain it. Um, but it's just neat. Um, Alright. Like I said, these guys are just insanely random, which is really frustrating to deal with, especially at such a low level. Like, I can't really do much right now, unfortunately. But this is also a good reason why I probably shouldn't have saved it. Let's actually come back. Okay, I was going to say go back the other way and see if... Wow, really? Really? Alright, well, we'll just keep at it. I don't really care. <laughs> this game sucks. <laughs> I'm just trying to walk past them. I'm trying to walk past. Let me walk past. Thank you. Ugh. Thank you. Jeez. Okay. Alright, so now we've got that out of the way. Uh, we can go into some of the other caverns. Or other dungeons. Uh, you want to go back into that one dungeon uh, that I pointed out earlier with the, uh, the bluish enemies. And I also want to get my health back, so let's go ahead and just sit here for a moment. So, exciting stuff in the land of Hydlide. Hydlide. It's a game. I think. Yeah, so I actually watched a couple of reviews of this game. A couple popular reviews. And, um, you know, they make a lot of really good points. I don't really disagree with any of them. Um, but I was still able to like sort of like push my way through the game and it was mildly entertaining at points. It was painful at other points. Don't get me wrong. Um, but uh, yeah, I, one of the, the reasons that I think people really, really despise this game is that uh, I think this was released in like 1989. Like it, it was a not a late release on the NES, but like, you know, Legend of Zelda had been out for a couple of years by that point, and so this game was just absolutely archaic by those standards. There we go, we got a pot, and now a uh, opening is going to open up. And something I actually haven't explained is you do have a magic system in this game, but at first you only have the turn spell, and after you level up a couple times you get the fire spell. 
turn is really interesting because it reverses the trajectory of the enemies, which is actually really, really handy. We're going to be using that a lot over the course of the rest of the playthrough. Um, the fire spell and the ice spell uh, pretty much just kills enemies. That's it. Um, and unfortunately, you get no experience points from killing enemies with magic. Uh, when you're in these dungeons early on in the game, by the way, you actually lose health when you're inside them. So that's exactly what happens. Uh, I killed the enemy. I had lost some health in the in the process, um, and then I died just because I was in the dungeon. So, hide light. <laughs> um, but yeah, by the time this game came out in the uh, the United States, you know, uh, this genre had really like, you know, really really pushed ahead. Um, you know, again, this was totally appropriate for 1984. It was even, you know, cutting edge in a way. Um, this was actually a big seller in Japan. Um, lots and lots of copies sold um, on the various platforms it was released for. But it was quickly surpassed by, you know, other games. Um, you know, the genre evolved. Video games as a whole evolved very quickly from, you know, um, the mid 80s and on very very quick evolution in just about all genres so all right we go into here and so this is actually kind of interesting these are randomized treasure chests and uh, there's gonna be a special item we need in one of them and kind of like the fairies you know the placement of said item is completely random so you just need to go and pick up every single one and so none of those did the trick Let's actually come back down here. There we go. So we got the key. Let's go ahead and save it. All right. So what we're going to do is go ahead and go back. And uh, we are going to... Actually, let me kill a couple of these guys too. Actually, these aren't the guys I want to kill. Uh, there are some of these knights I have to kill, which will give me a shield. Um, and then there are a couple more knights that will give me one of the treasures we need, I believe. Again, super cryptic. Nothing in the game tells you, hey, kill knights to get special item. It just kind of happens. Um, and the real cryptic part is getting the treasure because you have to kill the knights in a very specific room to make a very specific treasure chest appear at random. Um, and again, how you're supposed to figure this stuff out on your own, you're not. Uh, you're supposed to hope someone else does it and then you look up a walkthrough. So, I'm also trying to figure out where some of those other moving blocks are to get our second fairy, but I think it's actually on a different uh, continent. So, I'm gonna call them continents. Even though they're really just divided by, you know, a moat. So this is interesting right here, these two warlocks. Um, they have to be killed at the exact same time um, or in one shot with your wave spell, which we haven't earned yet. So we have to get some level ups. And that'll unlock our final fairy, which will take us to the final island in the game. And that's where you can get soft locked. So you want to make sure you don't save it without having all of your other items. And I'll sort of point that out as we go. Um, Alright, so yeah, I wanted to come out of that dungeon because I want to come get this chest right here, which is also necessary. And let's go ahead and use the turn spell, just in case we need it. There we go, we got a jewel. So the zombies are good to grind out on too, but unfortunately they're pretty uh, erratic. So I'm really not going to worry about them right now. And let's just keep moving on. Uh, we are going to hit that desert pretty soon. And uh, one thing I'm going to do is go ahead and go back into that uh, dungeon. And that should spit us out um, on the other part of the map where we need to go. So we're going to go ahead and come back down here. These guys are actually good to grind out on too. I really should grind out on them, honestly. Uh, sometimes you can just sort of like, you know, cut them off. Kind of like this. Like right before they roll around a corner. You can just smash right into them.
All right, so I feel kind of numb already after doing all that grinding. Um, <clears throat> these guys are no longer giving us experience points, so what we're gonna do is come back to this dungeon and get to sort of the the other side. And if I really wanted to, I could try to kill these knights. Uh, they can give some good experience points. Um, unfortunately, they're a bit of a pain to deal with. Um, it's easier to deal with guys like these when you've got a lot of like long corridors and whatnot. Um, but unfortunately, we don't really have that here. And they will kill me very, very quickly. Assuming they even give me experience points. They might not be giving me experience anymore. Wow, are they not gonna give me experience? Oh, jeez, man. Okay, not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. So, alright, let's, uh, see if we can... Yeah, this is where one of our other fairies is, so... Now, this is an awful puzzle as well, so kind of like with the the bees earlier, you need to touch the right tree. However, three out of those four trees can kill you. So, we have to pick the right one. That one will kill me. That one will kill me. And we have to do it all over again. Let's go ahead and reload our game. How about that one? Not that one. Definitely not that one. Much like the fairy in the, uh, the beehive, it's random, so it's a different tree every time, and every time you load your game, uh, it changes. So actually, what I probably should do is just sit here and just let my life replenish. And, um, so it looks like our health is about... Our health bar is actually, uh, half. So... It's basically uh, 10 blocks of health. We have five currently. That's our max. Okay, let's go ahead and save it again. Not that one. Not that one. That's it. The one that doesn't hurt you, you have to press A on. And let's go ahead and just let our health replenish again. And, uh, come to think of it, we might not actually need to be here outside of that ferry. Um, we actually need to go back to one of the other dungeons. But, let's just, I'm gonna show you around the desert anyway, regardless. So, there are a lot of sandworms here, and these guys do a lot of damage. So, it's good to just kind of avoid them. You also have a moat you can go into. Here we go, this is where I needed to be. Okay, so this is where we can get a couple more items. Uh, the treasure chest that you make appear on the other side of the map um, actually requires the key as well. So the key is really important for, you know, multiple, multiple reasons. Uh, you really do not want to hit any of these guys head on. If you do, they will kill you in just a couple of hits. And um, so again, that's where your turn spell can be really handy as well, because if they come your way, just turn them around. There we go. We just got a shield. And let's go ahead and save it, and let's come back this way. So, on this part of the map, you make a treasure chest appear over here towards the right. And it can take a while to, to, to make it spawn, unfortunately. But notice that we're still getting a little bit of health back in this dungeon, whereas in other dungeons we were actually losing health. I don't know if the life gain or life loss is dependent on your level. Um, but the tiles earlier where we were losing health are the exact same tiles that we're walking on right now, so it's, it's confusing. Also, if you want to check your inventory to see what items you have, you can just pull it up like this. I believe we get one more item, and that's it. And then we get one more fairy, and then we can basically head to the end of the game. Um, but we do want to level up some more. And there are going to be some goblins that appear. I think they might actually ap start appearing now. Also, this castle here, uh, it actually has a, a, a hole you can jump into. It actually pops you out into the moat. And we actually don't really want to do that yet. So, there are some eels out there in the moat. And it's just very, very dangerous. So, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of chill here for a minute to get our health back. But Highlight is actually, you know, aside from the grinding, it's a really short game. Um, so, you know, if someone out there 
ever wants to try to, you know, complete this game, it's actually not that hard to do so. As long as you're patient, um, as long as you're willing to save constantly like I'm doing, um, it, it won't take you that long to get through. Like, we're almost an hour in, and we're actually getting kind of close to the end of the game already. Not kind of close, we're actually very close to the end of the game already. Um, but we still have to level up a lot. That's where, that's where the, the game's length comes, comes from. It's all in the grind. Um, you know, probably a good 20 or 30 minutes of this playthrough so far has been grinding, if not more. So. Okay, our health is full. Let's go ahead and progress on. So I'm going to go back to the beginning areas because I want to see if, like, the goblins are appearing now. The goblins will give us some good experience points. Another place we can grind is on the um, the sandworms, but the sandworms are really tough to deal with because their their movement is almost completely random. Um, unfortunately, these blue guys here they're they're really good to grind out on early on, but they no longer give us experience points, so they're pretty much useless now. There are other versions of them that appear. They're called hypers, and they haven't appeared yet. Actually, kind of surprisingly. Um, And let's see if the goblins have appeared yet. I believe they appear towards these beginning areas. Yeah, no goblins. Yet. Yeah, they, they would appear here, but they're not. So that's a bummer. Um, what I might end up having to do is actually grind out on the zombies. I think the zombies will still give us experience points. Oh, another thing we can do is come and try to attack these wisps. I think the wisps will actually... Um, Give us experience points. Let's see. And if they do, I'll just grind out here. Yeah, they do. So we're going to have to grind out here. Okay, so here we go. We finally got the goblins. Um, it looks like they're triggered by, you know, the level you're at and not the uh, items that you have. And of course, these guys are really dangerous, too. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and just grind out here for a while as well, so enjoy. Enjoy the grind. Thank you. 
Okay, so these guys aren't giving me any any more experience points, so we're done with that grind session. Now we can grind out at the last castle that we're gonna go to right now. Um, we actually have to get our third fairy though before we do that. Let's make sure we've got all the items. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've got everything. Yeah, you actually get your final treasure at the uh, the final final castle, uh, and again, that's pretty much mandatory. Uh, you have to get that uh, final treasure in order to make the final boss appear. So you need all three fairies and all three main treasures. Uh, unfortunately, the game doesn't tell you what treasures you actually need, which ones are important, but ultimately you're gonna get everything as you play through the game, assuming you don't, again, soft lock yourself out by getting to the final island, not having the proper items, and then having to do the whole game over again. And that is an eel. The eels are very dangerous, so we have to watch out for those guys. So let's go ahead and use the turn spell as well. Have that prepped. So this is how you get to the final uh, island in the game. Let's go ahead and save it. Uh, we also have the wave spell now. And what we have to do is use the wave spell. Oh, that was so close. That would have been it. Uh, so you have to use the wave spell and kill both warlocks there, or wizards, um, in one hit. So we need to go ahead and e equip the wave again. This part is just a major pain to deal with. So yeah, this is gonna take a ton of trial and error. It always does. Like, I think the last time I did this, it took me like 20 tries. It was pretty ridic ridiculous. Uh, other times, it's only taken me a handful of tries. So it just all depends on the, the pattern of the, uh, the wizards here. But yeah, you kill both and it makes the fairy appear. And then uh, once the fairy appears, you got all three fairies. They take you to the final castle. Um, one really bad gameplay mechanic in this game is that you can't shoot the wave attack up or down. You can only shoot it left or right. Uh, so with fire and ice, you can actually shoot them in four directions, but with the wave ability, uh, you can only shoot it left or right. Really, really frustrating. Uh, something else I haven't really explained, explained yet is the flash ability. That's basically like a screen clearing spell. It uses up the most magic points. Um, but it clears everything off the screen. Again, you get zero experience points for killing enemies with spells. Oh, that was kind of close too. So what I do here is I just go ahead and just reload my game. There's no point in me just waiting for my magic to replenish itself. Wave uses a little over half my magic at this point. If I had, uh, if I was maxed out on my levels, I could probably use it twice without recharging, but it's best for me to just, you know, save and load my game. If I really wanted to, I could probably just save it right here as well. That way I don't have to, uh, move back down to this area. Oh, that would have been perfect. That was it. That was exactly what I needed, but I was facing the wrong direction. There we go. Got it. All right, that's gonna take us to our final island. And there's gonna be this dragon here. You can't actually kill the dragon yet. You have to go inside the castle first, but uh, there's a special trick to that, unfortunately. So we need to equip our fire spell and shoot this tree with it. And then we go inside that dungeon. Let's go ahead and save it. Don't touch the dragon, and don't touch his fire. It will hurt you very, very badly. Uh, right now, the dragon's actually invincible as well, which is kind of interesting. Uh, these black knights also hit pretty hard. And uh, it actually looks like we're maxed out on our levels, by the way. Uh, that's why we're not getting uh, any experience points. You'll notice that our strength meter is actually maxed out. That indicates that you're at your highest level possible. Your life meter actually doesn't go all the way up like your strength meter does. So this room is actually where the final boss appears, but we have to make the final boss appear first. And to do that, you have to come down here and tap this gravestone. 
And for some reason, it'll make the dragon no longer invincible. It'll make him vulnerable. And then um, it'll also make all the water outside disappear as well. So that's actually kind of cool. But we actually have to go out and find a treasure where the water once was. But as far as grinding is concerned, this is a place you can come and grind at as well. Uh, it's, you know, grinding here with these, these black knights isn't too bad. Alright, so let's go ahead and save it. And what we're gonna do... ...is just slowly kill the dragon. Just bump into him, just like so, and then replenish our health once it gets low, like that. Actually, I probably shouldn't have saved it. Uh, the reason for that is, um, one thing that is not saved is the health of enemies. So the dragon is back to full health, but I don't have full health. Let's actually walk outside first. Oh, I can't do it yet. You have to kill the dragon first before the opening will appear. So this is uh, where the game, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to say this is where the game starts to get tedious. I mean, it's been tedious for a long time now. We're almost an hour and a half into this Let's Play uh, as I've been fast forwarding through all the grinding and my eyes are starting to get sore. Uh, my throat is starting to get dry. I am starting to get a little loopy. Um, that's what happens when I play games like these for extended periods of time. They just kind of, they wear on you basically and Hide Light will definitely wear on you if you're just sitting here by yourself, not talking, not hanging out with anybody. It'll wear on you. And it's definitely wearing out, uh, wearing me out already. So. Ugh. Oh, it's okay, at least I've got full health. But, uh, yeah, fights like this are very tedious. The final boss fight is gonna be the exact same way. You go in, you do a couple hits. Then you leave, you get your health back, then you go back and you try it again. Uh, and you rinse and repeat like three or four times. Um, it is possible to defeat the final boss not at max level, but I'm gonna try to be at max level. Not try, I am at max level already. Oh, that was it too. That was it right there. He pretty much had like one pixel's worth of health. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just running into him in defense mode. Um, you don't want to run into him in attack mode, otherwise you'll you'll die in like two or three hits. So, you know, even in defense mode, he's still taking a ton of health away from me. So, you really need to be careful about how you attack enemies in this game. Uh, these boss-like characters in particular. There we go, one more hit should do it. There we go. So now the dragon has given me the medicine, and the medicine is really good. You want it for the final boss. Uh, so basically when I die now, it'll actually replenish all of my health. So it's almost like you have two health bars, which is, which is quite nice. We're gonna come down here to get another treasure, like I said. Bam, the ruby. That's our final treasure that we need. So we have all the items in the game now. Uh, and the three fairies. Again, um, three treasures are required. And the three fairies are required as well in order to make the final boss appear. Does my health replenish out here? I don't think it does. No, it does. It just does much slower. Yeah, let's get back on the green grass. But yeah, this is the uh, this is the home stretch, guys. I mean, we're we're at the end already. Like I said, Highlight is not a super complex game. It is not a super long game. Even though I've been fast forwarding through the grinding, uh, we're not quite a half an hour or an hour and a half into the whole gameplay session. So, you know, you can sit down and beat this game in one sitting. It's not impossible, not by any stretch. Um. I mean, it's not even half as long as, like, Zelda 1 or Zelda 2. 
uh, or, or other games like that. But it is tedious. It's very, very tedious. Uh, it requires some endurance. It requires patience as well. Let's go ahead and turn these guys around. So what I'm going to do at this final boss, though, is use my flash spell, which is going to be really, really important to get me through uh, this. Let's go. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Why did you do that? Okay, let's go ahead and save it anyway. Switch over to our flash spell. And what I'm going to do is actually reload my game because he can actually spawn there right by the door like that. And you don't want that to happen. Let's go ahead and move back over to my flash spell. Again, his spawn is actually random, just like, you know, the spawns of other enemies. What's cool is that the flash spell also removes uh, his fireballs on screen. And there we go. So we just go in, we do a couple of hits. And a nice little trick is you can just go back outside to get your health back. Now you can get your health back inside the dungeon as well, but it, you know, it doesn't replenish as quickly as it does outside. So we're going to do this like three or four times, hopefully more or less just three times, but we'll see what happens. So I'm just letting my life replenish. But yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a very tedious part of the game as well. So again, you go in. You attack the boss a couple of times in defend mode, by the way, defensive mode. If you do offensive mode or attack mode, you will just get wrecked. Um, so you don't want that to happen. Uh, you have to do defense mode. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of like kind of like a slow way to end the game. But I mean, it's almost appropriate for how the rest of the game is. I mean, it's kind of in line with, again, how the rest of the game progresses. And uh, I actually don't have enough magic yet, so let's go at... Mm, I can't reload my game, actually, because then uh, I'll lose the boss health, unfortunately. Let's just wander around in circles again. When enemies, like, bump into each other, they actually reverse directions. So that's something you have to watch out for as well. I'm just sort of avoiding these guys. And they're all ganging up on me, too. It's like, uh, can you guys go the other way, please? That would be nice. And there's really no point in me killing these guys, either. Because no experience points, no gold, no nothing. Alright, let's see what happens. Alright, okay, he's down at the bottom. Do I have flash? I do have flash. Okay, cool. And let's go ahead and use it. And if you sit slightly over to the left or right of the boss, uh, his fireballs won't hit you, which is which is nice. Let's go ahead and just use our uh, medicine. Just get a take a bunch of health off of him, just like that. And let's try to not get hit. Now we need to escape again, get our health back. And again, it's your health replenishes faster when you're on the green grass. So even though my health was coming back in the dungeon, uh, you can sit out here on the green grass. Just don't save or load. Remember, if you reload your game, the boss health just comes back completely. So boss health, uh, the state of the boss health is not saved um, when you save your progress. Uh, I actually tested it out, so I know it doesn't work. <laughs> um, there's actually a walkthrough online that tells you you should go down to the graveyard and just wander around there or where like the the gravestone was in the dungeon to get your health back and just dodge the skeletons. That's that's way too risky. I tried it and remember your health replenishes a lot slower in there. So it's it's not worth doing at all really. So it's best just coming back outside. It does save the boss health even if you go back outside. So that's pretty cool. It's a nice attention to detail. I have to give it that. So you want to kill these guys and hopefully this is it. Jeez, oh, come on. Um, great. That dude took away like half of my health.
Yeah, and I don't have enough magic to use uh, flash right now. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go back outside actually. These guys just seriously trolled me. Which normally they don't troll me, normally they're they're pretty nice actually. But they, they're having a tendency of spawning uh, at the top right, which is a really bad place for them to spawn. Because when they gang up on you in that area, it's just, you, you end up having to use your turn spell, or other spells, and I need, I need a full magic meter so I can use my flash spell once, if not twice. And I want to give myself enough magic to where I can use turn a couple times going to the boss. And then have enough magic to use uh, flash once I get there. So Flash is, I think Flash is a really good strategy to use on the boss. You can basically clear out all the enemies, which opens up the boss, you know. So you won't get ganged up on when you uh, are attacking the boss. Yeah, and you do not want to take these guys head on. It is, it is not worth it. Now again, I need to let my magic replenish. Okay, good. We got three on the left-hand side. Is one going to appear on the right? Let's see. Nope, he appeared on the left. Very good. Perfect pattern. Okay, let's go ahead and use Flash. Kill all those enemies so I don't get ganged up on. It also kills the Fireball. And this should do it, actually. Yeah, his health is... done. Bam! We just beat Hydelight on NES. Uh, took us about an hour and a half flat. Um... But that's it. Um, we're going to have the most amazing ending ever. In three, two, one, go. That's the ending. The whole thing. Done. <laughs> so all that work for a congratulations. Oh, at least the princess looks somewhat happy. I think. I can't really tell. She's 8-bit. But uh, that's Hydelight, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. If you have any questions or comments, as usual, uh, you know, leave them down in the comment section below. Uh, like I said a bunch of times in this playthrough, I don't really recommend anybody play this game unless you're like really into older Japanese action RPGs, because it is, it does sort of show you elements that a lot of other games took inspiration from, uh, like the the run and bump mechanic. Uh, and so forth. Uh, and the grindy nature, actually. A lot of uh, Japanese action RPGs like this from back in the day were very grindy. Um, I don't know if it was necessarily the pad out the, the, the game length, or if some Japanese developers back then thought that, you know, it was satisfying. I mean, in some games, it is satisfying. Like, I like grinding in the East games a little bit, you know? Um, but uh, it gets really, really tedious in this game. But, yeah, it's an experience. It's, it's... It's a history lesson in a way, and you know, I'm glad I've got it, you know, under my belt now. So I'm glad to be able to say that I've done it. Also, I think this is going to be the first full live Let's Play on YouTube. I couldn't find any full live Let's Plays of this game, uh, at least not in a single video. So they were all split up. Uh, all the videos I saw were split up. So, hey, at least we can fill that, that void on YouTube. So once again, guys, thanks for watching. Um, uh, I don't think I'm going to be covering any of the other Hydelight games anytime soon, although I am kind of interested to cover Super Hydelight, and I am going to be picking up Virtual Hydelight on Saturn sometime soon. Uh, but those will not be Let's Plays if I do ever cover them. Uh, they will be live streams if I do them, so... <laughs> Big Fs, of course, you know. Super Hydelight actually is a lot better than the other ones in the series. You do have actual physical manual attacks as opposed to just, you know, the run and bump mechanic. And, uh, you know, but it's, it's, I'd say it's probably equally as cryptic as, uh, as this one. So same with virtual Hydeline, very, very cryptic as well. So I don't know, but we'll see. So yeah. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, uh, consider subscribing. I got a lot of let's plays here and many, many more to come. Uh, for everyone else, thanks for your continued support. Hope you guys continue to enjoy these videos. And uh, until the next one, take it easy.